he's like, welcome to the show. The show's called Lifestyle Avenue. And of course, my name is the one and only Radio Bay Letty K-O-P-I Baby. And then I'm the one and only. I'm so, so happy to be having this interview with the rare doctor. I want you to remember this doctor. Robert Mudugo. He is a consultant, an author, a speaker, financial literacy, lit, lit, literacy leader, uh, leadership, change management, personal development, entrepreneurship. I mean, he's got all the hats. Good afternoon, Dr. Robert. Hi, Letty. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank well, you for having me. I'm so excited about today. Awesome. I mean, I, I, I this, okay, I'm going to you know, normally I'll be like, so tell me about yourself. So you know what? I'm going to put you on the spot because you're a speaker. <laughs> right. I'm going to be like, um, I want you to imagine mm -hmm. you're in a stadium. Right. It's full of people. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. People are there to listen to what you have to say. And, you know, it's you're trying to teach people that you need them to be able to introduce themselves in, in an un unforgettable way. Right. Through principles. Right. Let's go. Okay, my name is Wilbert Mutoko. I'm a student of life. I'm passionate about uh, entrepreneurship, education, and leadership, financial literacy. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm so far. <laughs> I, I want to know, how did you discover your purpose? Because that's what everybody's trying to figure out right now. Right. Okay, so for me, it, it's a very long story, but I'll try to cut it very short. Right. So, um, 1994, I'm doing A-level. I was born then. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing A level and uh, I fall sick, very sick, uh, sick unto death. Um, my sickness, I think, was very spiritual. Wow. Some evil spirits haunting me. I would fall dizzy. I would have headaches. I would have stomach aches. Almost every disease was on every me. Yeah. Delta variant. Yeah, they had yeah. a bad bed. It was just a problem, big problem. I'll never forget it in a hurry. So my father took me to private doctors, took me to government doctors, took me to witch doctors, took me to prophets. I did all kinds of things. I fasted, I prayed. Nothing was working. Were you scared of dying at the time? I was scared of dying, but I was also tired of life. Yeah, I'd, I'd almost given up. So on the 17th of October, 1994, a cousin of mine invites me to the city where he was. He had been praying for me from afar, invites me, and uh, he takes me into an office where there were some pastors there who were waiting for me. And they ask me, um, are you born again? I said, I was born going to church. They say, no, we are not talking about that. We are talking about being born again. Do you have a relationship with God? I said, I'm not sure. So they led me to receive Jesus as, the, as my personal savior. And one of the pastors laid his hands on me and I was instantly healed. Wow. Lady, that's my testimony. So I was so touched because I had gone through a lot of pain. Now, you mean somebody can just lay a hand on you and mm. declare you are healed and just like that? I said, wow. I was left with three days to start writing examinations. And I had not been going to school for six months because of this illness or sickness. So I went home, tried to read. I could now read. I was so moved. Then I told my cousin that, no, you know what, I need to be prayed for again. He says, no, no, you don't need to be prayed for again. You are fine. I said, no, 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 let me then pray again. So I went again on the 18th of October. The pastor prayed for me again. He said, go and write. So I went, I went back to school to write without having been attending school. The long story short, I didn't pass enough to go to university. So I ended up going to, you know, to do some odd jobs and then became a temporary school teacher, then went to a teacher's college and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the thing that challenged me was to say, so you mean there is a God, a real God, who has changed my life. I also want to pray for people so that they get healed. That was the first thing. And as long as I am breathing, I want to make a difference in other people's lives. So that's how it started. In my heart, I just felt like, you know what, I want to do something. So I am a beneficiary of mentorship because then my cousin and his wife, they took, they took care of me and they directed my path because they could see my passion for education. They are the ones who led me to become a, tem a temporary school teacher, then go to a teacher's college and so on and so on. Yeah. I, I know that despite, I like how you were very honest mm -hmm. that because a lot of people go hard when you just pray, you know, mm. you don't need to put in the hard work, but mm. the hard work is needed. Yeah. But yeah. I like the fact that you actually admit that 
you didn't really do well, but it mm. didn't deter you. Yeah. But I know, mm. as human beings, mm. we have this thing of forgetting our past right. once in a while. Mm. And I'm mm. sure there's a point in your life where you were deterred in a way. So how did you wake yourself up from the yellow brick road? Right, so um, from that point, um, I then took advantage of the mentorship that I was getting. Um, and it's unfortunate that today it's not very easy to get mentors who can give somebody time. Uh, many times we have to pay for mentorship now. But back then it was a privilege that I could be mentored in how to, you know, grow up as a young responsible person, how to work hard, how to start small, and even, you know, how to get into a good relationship and get married and stuff like that. So yes, there, there comes a time where you are worshipping God and you are trying to touch people's lives and you realize that not everybody is the same. Some people are not going to be interested in what you do. It's just a fact of life. So you get to a point where somebody can discourage you. They will tell you off. Um, I remember when I wrote my first book, maybe I've skipped, but when I wrote my first book, there's somebody who commented, you know, people were commenting on Facebook and congratulations, wow, you know. And then this lady is from our village. She just uh, wrote a question. She didn't compliment me. She just said, you are whose child? Oh. Right. <laughs> right. I was like, wow. I was so, I was so discouraged. I was like, wow. How, how does somebody just come in like that? No way. Right. Whose child are you? Does it matter really? Right. Whatever little I'm doing to try and make a difference. But what I learned from that is you cannot please everybody. There are people who will like Letty and there are people who don't like you. Some of them don't even have a reason anyway. But we need to keep on doing good. Right. And and, and as a person, we know how to motivate people. Mm -hmm. Motivation only lasts for a certain period of time. We right. all know that. I mean, one minute I'm watching the fitness video, and they get a normal. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work out. And then two, three days. You know, the people who can sustain it for a a, a week. I'm right. that person who watches does it that day and the following day I'm like eh, 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 eh. Right. So how, because you you also are a change agent. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. So how do you keep somebody motivated or for them to have a permanent change in their character? I would say motivation is like bathing. You cannot say I bathed four times last week so I'm still fine. <laughs> How you wish you could do that in this winter. You can't. You have to continuously bath. Right. Every day you bath. Sometimes you bath. For some people, it's once a day. For some people, it's twice a day. For some people, it's thrice a day. But we have to constantly bath. You can't say, I bath. So that's the same thing with motivation. That's why some people say motivation doesn't work. Right. Because they, they, they read a book 20 years ago, or maybe they watched a, a, a video last last week and they still expect to have you know energy in them so i would say we need to be motivated on a daily basis and one of the it's not a secret really one of the principles is personal development right i've seen that to work a lot when you develop yourself when you work on your life continuously reading almost every ceo i know including people like bill gates bill gates still reads a minimum of one hour per day before sleeping and he takes reading vacations and he's one of the richest people in the world and i'm thinking whose books is he reading what is he still reading when he's a multi-billionaire so you then find that wilbur doesn't have much he's trying to make ends meet and he doesn't like reading too question mark that's the story of our lives question mark <laughs> it is the story of our lives yeah i know reading is really difficult yeah I think you need to instigate it when a child is young. Yeah. And not such a room it's fun. Not for if he needs it to get to a certain place. Yes, let Right. Yeah. You have a PhD. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember doing my dissertation from that was the worst experience of my life. Right. Worst. Mm -hmm. Worst. Including <laughs> the reading, which I did not like. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it, it taught me something. Hori, we thought again. What's on the driving school? You know, people just take driving school as driving school. But if you actually look at Hori, it's a fine driving school. For that lesson, so it's a fine. It teaches you um, consistency, right. principle. Mm -hmm. True. As a person who, who, who you know, your masters now it's a PhD. What do you want to say to somebody 
when your heart of the guy has really given up because I know I would see myself for Pagella completely such chapter one. I'm like, what chapter one? What are you talking about, lady? I I, 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 I don't I couldn't I couldn't put it together. And it's not just that Gehala even Mobutilombarona, you know, is it a relationship? Hudingalo because we're all diff- we're right. all different. Is right. it um changing? Mm-hmm. You know, you gave a good, very good example, Gahori. You know, if you want to change, mm. change, use the example of right. You can't say mm. uh, you, just because we're like four now it's enough. Right, you know? right. So what do you want to say? Because I'm sure what it has mentally re- because I know I was not the I, I'm not the same person mm. anymore because mm. of the dissertation. Right. What do you want to say to 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 people right now? Because who calls you? Mm. Some people want to go back to school. Mm. Some people are 50 and mm. but about, you know what? I want to go get my first degree. Mm. Mm. Right. Right. So what do you want to say to them? What I want to say is, why do you want to do it? If your why is not big enough, you will not finish. Oh, wow. Well, I was actually hoping for... Yeah. Whether it's a PhD or it's a first degree or it's a diploma or it's a business you want to start or it's a relationship it's a marriage whatever it is why are you doing it you know talking of the phd as one of the hardest things that i've ever gone through because of my busy schedule mm-hmm. i became a, sort of like a sickling right. during the phd yeah right. i remember going to south africa to mafi king there are times when I will just arrive, I have a headache, I have a stomach ache, I, I don't know where I am, but I'm presenting tomorrow at the conference, and I'll just throw myself on the bed. Sometimes I'll wake up 12 hours later. Wow. Yes. Like, it's not something I would want to do again, but there was a big why. So I say to people, anything you do without a big why, why, do, why are you doing it? If you don't have a big why, find something else. That you have a big why for and go for it but as for you are starting at 45 going to school you are starting at what age age is just a number right as long as you have a good why go for it and also i want to say to people education is very important for sure it's very important we know that there are some entrepreneurs that have no education but they are highly successful their secret is that they know how to hire educated people right so never say education is not important education is important you either have it or you hire people who have it for things to work. Otherwise, you can even grow your business to a certain level and it hits a plateau. You don't know what to do next. You know that when you go to school, for argument's sake, let's say you are doing a Bachelor of Business Management, mm-hmm. you will find that you are not just being taught about business management. You are being taught about accounting, you are being taught about business law, you are being taught about economics. You're being... So different things that help you to be well-rounded. So for those of us who can't go to school or who find that going to school is not for them, no problem, but develop yourself, read books. I feel pity for some of the people who will say, well, but I don't want to go to school and I don't want to read. I don't want to watch videos. I don't want to listen to audio books. What do you want? Right. How are you going to make it? It's going to be very difficult. Find something to do. Either you are doing personal development or you go to school or you combine both. That's the way I see somebody being able to, you know, proceed from one level to the other. Right. Mm. And then and you, um, you've come across a lot of personalities, you know, through your journey. As, as a person in Nohori, you, you try to help someone develop personal development. Mm-hmm. Where do you think the human race needs to change in order for us to see what's happening right now? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I think the first thing is to have a good relationship with our maker. Because the reason why you and I will be excited, like it's a Saturday, we are here saying we are discussing about financial literacy, about personal development. If the why was for me to just come here and let people know who is well bad, I think people have known me enough. I've written books, I've published papers, I have a lot of, I have hundreds of videos on YouTube. I'm on LinkedIn with a lot of followers. You know, I don't think at this stage I'm looking for people to recognize me, but I want to plow back. Now, for you to have that heart of being able to touch other people's lives and to empathize with other people's lives, it takes the love of Jesus Christ. Because that's, um, you know, it's, it's not your usual kind of love. It's the love 
which, which doesn't depend on what you have done for me. Whether you have wronged me or not, whether you are helping me or not, whether you like me or you don't, the agape kind of love. So I think the first thing is to align our hearts with God. I remember somebody asking me one time when I was talking, you know, I was in a training room and I just happened to mention a bit to say, you know, I love people so much. And this guy looks at me and says, why do you love people so much? You know, he was very sincere. He was wondering how, why, why are you, so, I know you love people, but why are you so concerned, Wilbert? I said, the love of Jesus. I don't know for others, but for me, I know 1994, I would have been in the grave. Letty, you were not going to see me. Right. Anybody listening to me now will never have listened to me. Whoever has benefited from my life in any way after 1994 would never heard about me. It has been the grace of God. Right. So no matter how hard the challenges we go through, when you are connected with God, we know the story of Job. We know the stories of other people who suffered in the Bible and they depended on God and God helped them. So for me, the first thing, let's align our hearts with God. Let's fear God. Let's love God. Let's study the word of God so that we can be comforted in difficult times and we get direction. And then the second thing is personal development, right? And then the third thing is mentorship. We need mentors. Yes, I started off with my cousin and his wife mentoring me. And from there, I got other mentors. Many of them were for free. Maybe your uncle can be the next mentor. Maybe your sister, your brother, your neighbor can be your next mentor if you humble yourself. And you're willing to learn from them. But as time goes on, I've also gotten mentors that I pay. Because they are so busy, they will not have time for me. You know, one thing I don't like is, let's say, Letty, I say you are my mentor, right? Mm -hmm. I talk to you, Letty, can you be my mentor? You say, okay, that's fine. You have a heart to help me. But you're a busy woman. So you help me when you have time. Mm -hmm. That's not good for me. Because I'm highly ambitious. I have a lot of things to achieve before I leave this earth. So if I want Letty's time, I must be willing to pay for it. So that she can pay attention and she puts me on the program. I um, You know, you've said something quite provoking because nowadays we don't see mentors yeah. at all. Yeah. At all, at all. We don't get to see that. Yes. It's really difficult. Everybody's busy like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. But you know, something on like a lighter note, mm -hmm. because I'm sure everybody's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> so, you know, it's something on a lighter note, it's the end of our conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at one point in your life, um, you know, there was that one girl who, who drove you crazy, <laughs> drove you nuts, crazy, when you thought, you really thought you were going to get married to her. Right. How did you get over her? Right, that's a very interesting question. I don't know whether I got over her or she got over me. <laughs> or things got over us. Right. Yeah, there's this girl I really loved. And she said she loved me too. Right. And uh, I remember I was in uh, teacher's college. So we were during teaching practice. Isn't it first year you are in school? The second year you are out teaching. Then third year you come back. So I fell in love with her just before we closed the first year. And then we went to teaching practice. She was in a different place. I was in a different place. I loved the girl. And I was, you know, I'm gifted in writing. So those days, I didn't have a phone. So letters. I would write letters. Letty, I would write 10 pages expressing my love. <laughs> expressing my love. Now, herself, she's not that type of person. So right. what she would do is she would just respond. A page was a lot. Half a page was good enough. But for me, seven pages, 10 pages, seven pages, 10 pages. In a few months' time, I realized she was not responding any, anymore. Mm. She hurt me. Her photo was on my wall. Mm. I was reminiscing. I was thinking I'm going to get married. And I was seeing myself having a white wedding, but sometimes life doesn't happen. Don't when people poor. talk about a heartbreak, lady, I went through it. That one. I, I went through it. So one of the days, we then organized a Christian union gathering. And while we were at the Christian union gathering, this sister didn't come. The, the, the girlfriend then. And this brother was teaching at the same school right. with her. He comes to me and says, uh, you are the chairperson of the Christian Union, so I just wanted you to know that one of your ship is in problems. I said, which ship is that? He says, you see, that sister, like, tell me more about that. Because many people didn't know we were in love. I guess it happened just before we closed. Right. So um, he now tells me, no, she eloped. She's now married to another man. And So what he hurt me most lately was... Mm. 
at least why didn't you tell me? Mm. How could you be receiving my 10 pages, 7 pages, and you never tell me? My heart. Oh, goodness me, I was so hurt. Okay. So one good thing that I did was I listened to the advice that I was getting from reading and from my mentors. Right. When you have a heartbreak, after, soon after the heartbreak, don't do anything. Right. Don't be in love with anyone. You are injured and you are at risk. You are vulnerable. Don't, don't prove anything. So for six months or more, don't, don't, don't. So I took more than six months. I didn't propose to anybody. And that's when I found the love of my life, mm. who happens to be my wife for 22 years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I don't regret one second having lost that lady. But at that juncture, it hurt me so much. But I'm sure God knew. That's why the Bible says, all things work for good to them that love the Lord according to his calling. So if there's somebody out there, you are hurt in a relationship or business is not going well or you have been thrown out of your job or things are not going the way you were thinking or your children are, are not obeying you or your parents are throwing you out, all things work for good. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Wobet. I do hope we have a part two of this because... I learned a lot and I do want us to talk about financial literacy in our next conversation. So thank you so much for coming and speaking to us on your beautiful, beautiful mental wealth. <laughs> thank you so much, Letty. I appreciate your time and thank you very much, uh, listeners of Dumaifel. All right. This is how we come to the end of Person of Interest. Next stop.